You're listening to the Finding Career Zen podcast. I'm your host, Pete Newsom, and I'm joined today by Holly Corral and Kit Corral of Press PR and Marketing. Holly and Kit, welcome. How are you guys? Hey, Pete. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining. I'm, I'm excited to have you guys because I've known you for a very, very long time. Kit, I was thinking about it earlier. We met in, I believe, 1994, which is kind of hard to say out loud. I think it was even before that. Yeah, I think it was earlier on, like when I got to Florida State, it was 91. Oh, that's true. 90? Jeez. Okay, that's even worse. I graduated in 93, not started in 93. Yeah. So you're right. It would have been 91, if not 90. Yeah, right. that's a long time. And then, Holly, we met not too long after that because you guys were actually um, – dating then, right? When, when did you guys first, uh, we're here to talk about business, of course, but your personal life has to come into play because of what you do together. But when, when did you guys uh, first start dating? So we first started dating when we were 18. Um, in our senior year in high school, we didn't go to the same high school, but we had a mutual friend that introduced us. And then we dated for a little while, long distance, and then took kind of a extended break. And then and both ended up back in the same town, our hometown. So, so started now, dating again. That's the rest is history. And now, now that we're all 40, right? Then right, it's, been, right. it's been quite a few years, <laughs> I wish, right? Yes. And you went to North Carolina State. I did. Kit I did. went to SMU, then then FSU is where you ended up Correct. when we met, right? Correct. And, and then you ended up back together in, in Tampa. Well, we and, both ended up with jobs, which I, I don't know about Kit, but I never imagined myself to come back to, to Tampa and it was just where the job opportunity was. So yes, we reconnected when we both ended up with job, full-time jobs. Same. Here. I ended up uh, get, um, getting an internship at an advertising agency here and just had to get my foot in the door someplace. So just started here in Tampa in the market. So you and came back working, to Tampa and, and then Tampa and then came back. Agency, which is really weird. Our agencies, I work for an advertising agency too, even though I didn't end up doing advertising and our agencies competed against one another. Oh, no kidding. I didn't know that. So introduce for me, if you could, um, you know, Press PR and Marketing, your, your company that you started, I believe in 2007? Yes. So, so six, what, going on 16 years. Yeah. Nice. Congratulations on that. That That is, anytime you can say a, a duration like that, it's it's impressive because it's much easier said than done. <laughs> Um, but 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 um, yeah, tell me tell me a little bit about the organization and what what roles you guys play. You want me to start? Sure, go for it. Um, okay, so I guess 16 years ago we were living in Tallahassee, um, and I was ready to move on. So I said, "Told kid, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing going." Um, he was continuing to work at the agency that we both ended up being recruited to move to Tallahassee to work for. Um, so I was, I just was, I'll call it freelancing as the best way to describe it. We had a couple of clients, one of which was a volleyball national volleyball tournament client, which is kind of weird because that's actually how we met through, through the sport of volleyball. Right. Um, but we just doing mainly like anything they asked us to do kind of like they, we were recruiting volunteers for them. We were helping them with some sponsorship opportunities, doing some PR, but basically whatever marketing they needed us to do but started out of our house that we lived in Tallahassee. Um, and we stayed there for about two and a half years and then ended up moving closer to home um, to Tampa um, after we had our son. And then it started becoming real. <laughs> then it started be really solidifying and um, we ended up having an office. Um, so it, it, it became real once we left Tallahassee. That was always sort of the plan was to sort of Holly to get it up on and viable to a point, and then I could step out and uh, kind of step in to press. What What was the catalyst, if there was one, that led you to taking that you know, step to begin with and hanging your shingle, so to speak? I, you know, my parents are both entrepreneurs, and it's always been something I wanted to do. And it's funny because I even told my dad, who's been my mentor over the years, I said, I don't even know if I like this PR and marketing thing. And he's like, I promise when it's your own, you will like it much better. And it's, that's exactly what happened. I just, it's always been in my blood to do my own thing. And, um, you know, I had answered to my share of people <laughs> and I was just ready to like call my own shots. Didn't realize 
quite what that meant, but. Um, it's, a, it's a it's a scary cliff to jump off of, is it not? Mm -hmm. It is, it is. And that's kind of why we were fortunate enough to kind of have that like soft takeoff where, like I said, Holly could, you know, get a stable of clients to get it viable while I was still out in the, you know, in the working world and the advertising world. Exactly. And then I, once we got it to a certain point, we knew it was go time. So yeah. I want to, I want to, you know, just stay on this for a minute, if you guys don't mind. What, sure. If, if you look back to, to those moments, uh, because so many people, as I'm sure you've encountered over the years, knowing, you know, you have your own business, you know, probably share that they want to do the same thing, right? I, I, I had a dollar for every time someone says, I want to go start my own business. And um, not, that's not, advice I would give to everyone. It's not for everyone. Um, what what advice would you give to someone today who was, uh, I want to ask about getting into the PR space, but more specifically, you know, I, if you could answer first, who is thinking of going off and, and doing their own thing, what would you do differently or what would you recommend someone do first before taking that step? Go for it. Well, I know one thing I would recommend is make a lot of contacts, uh, follow up on your contacts, because, man, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I hate to use the term, it's so hack, but fake it till you make it. You know, when you know somebody and there's a face, you can, I mean, that relationship pays way more dividends than any, you know, you'll, you can you can find out how to do certain things within your industry, but it's all about that personal connection, because Wow. I mean, it's, it's such a challenge to just get an answer on an email, whatever, unless you know somebody. So it gets to be a bit of a challenge. Um, that's one thing I would say is figure out a plan, but more than that, while you're doing that, man, start calling people saying, Hey, just wanted to touch base, whatever. Hey, I'm thinking about doing my own thing, you know, just making the rounds and, letting people know not necessarily what you're doing, but just staying in front of them, like go to networking events, uh, get really good with names. That's one thing I will say, I wish I were better at. And Holly is like, wow, she's like a human memory bank for people. Like she'd see somebody she hadn't seen in 10 years and oh, that's Mr. Smith. And I'm like, I have no idea who you're talking about. That I could have just met him. That's a great trait and one that, I mean, kid, I'm more like you. I'm terrible with names and I, and it's an awful thing to be bad at because it, it's, you know, everyone likes to be remembered and yeah. you, know, you, you, you have a, a, you know, a young son who's um, you probably have these kind of conversations, but I tell mine all the time, go out of your way to say hello to people. And, and you know, a lot of kids are self-conscious about that, right? Like, unless they say hi to me first, I'm not going to, to be the one yeah. um, to do that. And, and I, I've always told mine, there's no downside to that at all. Everyone wants to be recognized. Everyone wants to be remembered. And knowing someone's name is a huge component of that. So shame on us. Kudos to you, Holly, for, for being I don't know how great I am at it, but yeah. I, I think the, the kid's right. I mean, keeping that solid network, and when I say a solid network, like a personal connection. So we'll send, if we see an interesting article about a client's industry or an old clients industry that we haven't talked to in 10 years. I'm, I've been known to like send them the link and say, did you see this article about your, you know, your industry, you should check this out. I've been thinking about you or whatever. It's very genuine and I intend it to be genuine, but we've really kept a very strong network and it has come back to us tenfold. Um, I bet it, I bet it has. It's, it's interesting timing that this has come up earlier today. We, we had a, um, a team call with, with, um, um, you know, with Four Corner Resources, a staffing company, and there's a lot of young professionals on there. And I was encouraging them to leverage their LinkedIn network to 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 be public. To you know, we hear you you we didn't have this you know 20 years ago. No one talked about your personal brand, but and we hear about that constantly today. But that's effectively what we're talking about. Is you know whether you work for um, you know for you know, for my company or 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 work for yourself. That's important. Your network is everything. And I'm sure, um, like me, I, I made this comment today, is that if I had to start over right now, I wouldn't be afraid because I know that I have a strong network. And that is everything in, in business. Yeah. I would also say, you know, we've had we've had over the years a lot of people say, Well, I want to go out on my own, or you know, we talk, I would love to own my own business. And, you know, because I want basically I don't want to work as much. I, mm. I, I want to have the freedom. I want to have the autonomy. Well, that's a joke. Um, I mean, there's not a vacation we go on where we're not checking our email 
or answering a crisis call. And a lot of our clients lend themselves to a lot of crisis because they're restaurant focus, they're, they're consumer focus. So they're restaurants, they're entertainment and attractions. So, and it always comes on a holiday weekend. So there's never a time when we're not working. So that's just such a misnomer that I want to have autonomy. I want to have flexibility. You know, I want to, I want to do my own. That's, that's a joke. Um, I mean, it's the client's going to call you when you are on vacation on the beach and you have to step away and, you know, answer yeah. the call. And yeah, so. People have a misunderstanding, I think when they want to start their own business, they want a better work-life balance. They want to be able to call their own shot. But when it's your business, there is no work-life balance. It is your life. I mean, let's face it. You're on the clock. Like Holly said, you're on the clock 24 seven, because if you are the only, if you are on your own starting your fledgling business and you have a deadline, like for an ad campaign due Friday, you are working every hour up until that time. It doesn't matter. You're not, you know, it's not like an, a nine to five job. It's not something that you can put down. It is, it, it, it's all day, every day, 24 seven. Now, conversely, every hour, every ounce of energy that you put in goes into you and your business and your pocket. So there's, there's pros and cons, but you definitely have to weigh them out, man, because boy, people that have a, that, like I said, that misunderstanding about work-life balance is not, is it, 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 it's not, it doesn't work with starting your own business. It's a, it's yeah. a huge misperception. Is it not where yeah. you, 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 people associate entrepreneurship with freedom and what you guys are showing is I, I agree a hundred percent. I think it's the opposite. I never felt more free than when I was working for an organization um, who you know had someone else to take care of other things where once you go out on your own, the buck truly stops with you and there's no help coming <laughs> i mean it either you you it or it doesn't get done <laughs> you are, you take are that help. hill yourself yeah you know i also think people don't realize all that comes with as as the business grows and we're again we're a small we're a small company but you know the payroll and the taxes and the insurance and the i mean there's a lot of uh um, there's a lot of pressure and yeah pressure and also just stuff to do i mean you know it's we're meeting with our tax accountant. I mean, it's like, it's just always something that the, the non-fun stuff is the things that they don't think about. It's so glamorous. Like everybody grows up dreaming of meeting with your tax accountant and stuff like that. And, you know, yeah. doing payroll and finding insurance and working with Trinet to get all your employee benefits. I mean, I yeah, know I right. did. It's what you dream, dream of. Well, dream I I, I just told a story the other day. I've told it many times over the years that the, I realized I was naive um, when I had employee number one had been with me about three months and he walked into my office one day and he said, hey, what's our vacation policy? And I was like, uh, we need a vacation policy, I guess. That is not what I envisioned when thinking, can I can I be successful on my own? You know, Can I acquire clients? Can I service those clients? Can I stand out? It wasn't how do I deal with, like you said, taxes and payroll and it, it, all of those things, vacation policies that come with it. Be, but those are critical and necessary, right? You can't avoid them. You have to you have to take ownership. Yeah. yeah, especially as you grow from very small, like just one or two employees to you hit like double digits and then it really starts becoming like uh, heavy because you're talking about benefits, you're talking about payroll, you're talking about insurance everything for multiple, like lots and lots of people. It's not just like, oh, you and somebody else, hey, it's vacation time, take what you need. You know, it, it's a lot, you have to define it. it. And that becomes an issue. I will say when you have to start defining things, it you can't really play it loose. And, and we did for a while, we were able to, but the more people you get, the more needs they have. Um, and the more, um, I won't say demands, but the more things that they, feel like they need or want. And so things start to change and you have to be, you have to put more systems in place. You, you, you know, you realize the value of those along the way. I, I'm sure like I did where I, and for years would, would proudly, I would boast that we're not going to be bound by structure and right. processes that I had, you know, weighing like an anchor working for big employers. But as you start to add, you know, people, 
and you start to spread out, you realize the necessity of it. And I, I suspect in many cases, that's the difference between success or failure as a company starts to grow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at times it's, we've done it well, at times we haven't. And I can look at those times where we haven't done it well and say, that's limited our success. Yeah, you know, we changed our a vacation policy, um, which we thought was to the employee's benefit um, about a year and a half ago. And uh, not everyone saw it that way. And it was a, it caused a real upheaval. And it was yeah. just a, yeah. one simple Especially when thing. you try and be cognizant of their needs, you know, especially when, when you, when you say, like you said earlier, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to be the taskmaster. And you try not to be, but it just somehow goes off the rails. It gets taken the wrong way, um, but you need it. Otherwise it's chaos. And you have to be able, like I said, if you don't define it, it will define itself. And that usually ends up- but What poorly. we found out is that the loosier, goosier we were, the less people like, I don't know, they weren't happy. Like, so we put a flex space program in place said, you know, you can take, you know, basically as many within reason times to work at home from home a month as you want. Well, nobody did it. They didn't take advantage of it. And then kind of resentful the fact that they didn't have that time to be able to work from home. So finally Kit was like, let's just tell them you have to take two days a month and work from home. And now we're finding people are actually doing it. So the more structure almost the, the more they react positively. It's it was very strange for us. It, it was we definitely we nice. counterintuitive. Like Holly was saying, it's like we, for a long time, we're like, if you need a vacation day, you know, vacation days, just take them. We're not, we're not counting them. We're not giving you 10 days. Well, then people were afraid to take to, it, it was, was just bizarre. so bizarre. I, I, like, I it get was it. Completely I, upside down. I completely get it. And I, it's something that I think about a lot, given this new venture Zen gig where we're um, existing exclusively to provide career advice and, and guidance. And one of the things that I'm a, a, a line I'm trying to walk is telling people what they need to hear, which may not be what they want to hear. And one of those things is in almost every case, the employer means well, their intentions are good. Even if the delivery isn't what they wanted it to be, even if, even though your perception of it, like, I'm, like what you guys are talking about with your time, out of the office, you know, to work from home, what we did with our vacation policy, it was a net win for, for the employees on paper, but the perception wasn't exactly a, a, what we intended. And it really did cause yeah. a lot of drama. And yeah. so what, what I always want employees to know in who, you know, really is our target audience um, versus the employer, just, just ask, talk to your employer. You know, if you have a concern, you know, address it directly because it, it may be, yeah, their intention may be very, vastly different than what you, you thought it was. 1000% agree. Communication is absolutely the key because it's literally like the old joke. It's like, what's wrong with you? Nothing. It's like, well, I can't help you fix it if you won't tell me what it actually is. So that's one thing we definitely try and foster around here. It's like, if you have a problem, a personal issue, if you have a problem with anything, come talk to us. You're not complaining, you know? I mean, we want to we want to help you fix it because the the, the happier you'll be, the, the the faster we can help you fix it, the happier yeah. you're going to be. And like you said, it leaves nothing, you know, to chance, no guesswork, no misinterpretation. So we really do try uh, and tell people, no matter what, just come talk to us. You know, I mean, as long as you're not, you know, just whining and complaining, right. uh, I have no problem. I mean, please, yeah. I mean. We, I want to help you solve right. problems. We don't know it if we don't if you don't tell us about it. Why do you think it's so, it, it, what you're saying it, it resonates with me so so strongly? Because I've you know, often thought I'm the last to know if there if someone's you know, I'm unhappy with something. I want to be the first to know. I I want to you know find out as soon as possible so we can fix it if we can. Sometimes we won't be able to. Um, but why do you think that's so hard for employees? to to do i mean have you know because it almost seems like it, it, there's there's you know inherent mistrust that you can really you'll be open and there won't be a penalty for it even though you know what you guys are saying and i would 100 percent agree there's no penalty right i mean you know the more you share that the better off we're all going to be i think i and it really is a trust issue i think it's the perception that they that no one wants to be labeled kind of like weak no one wants to be labeled a whiner. 
no one wants to be thought of as not being capable of solving their own problems, whatever that may be. Um, and it's, it's a trust and a pride issue. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, not that the pride is a bad thing. That's like professional pride. You know, I can take care of my business and that's a, that's a big, big deal to people. You know, they want to feel like they can manage things and don't need any help. But conversely, if you don't have, if you have that trust, then you can let your guard, employees can let their guard down and communicate honestly, which I mean, will solve the problem like that. Because the longer you don't, you wait to communicate on things like this, the more a problem and you internalize it, the more a problem sort of like festers, yeah. grows into resentment. And then you're ending up in a bad professional relationship. You're, you're in a, in a bad position within your company. It becomes very antagonistic and man, it just, it gets, it goes south in a yeah, hurry. That's true. It's a, it's a dangerous cycle. It's a bad cycle. Yeah. What have you guys done to address that? Have you, have you come up with anything that, that we have, we actually have. So, um, like I said, as we start, the growing pains were pretty tough for a while, but we instituted, we, you know, we tried to put ourselves in our employee shoes, like what would they want? Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously they want a lot of flexibility. We've added some programs like this flex space, a uh, couple of days a month, you use them or lose them. You can work from home because everybody has those days where you just need to be head down, work, grind it out. You don't need people talking, coming into your office or whatever distractions totally fine with that. Plus sometimes you just want to, don't want to have to commute. Don't want to have to, that's fine. But the other thing we've done is have um, quarterly check-ins even probably more often than that, where we'll call, you know, the employees in and just say, Hey, you know, like what's going on? Give us a temperature check. You know, is Very everything cool with you? Yeah. And it's not like, please report to the principal's office. You know, we're just like, Hey, you know, Sarah, come on in you know, how's everything going? How is this client? What's going on? You know, are you, are you okay? Are you, are you, are, are we helping you help you? Right. You know, like what are, what are things that you want to accomplish? What are things that you're looking to do? Are you getting to do those things like that? You know, we're you're really just not just professional, but personal also. Mm -hmm. That's that that's, I love that. And it's, it's such an important thing. Do, do you feel that the employees are responding to it? Do you feel that that's helped them be more open and, and trusting, right? Not, not that there's any reason not to be trusting, but I think it's like I said earlier, it's, I think it's inherent as due to the nature of the employee employer relationship. And um, it, it's great to hear what you guys are saying you know, because it's so consistent with what I believe that hey, take strip the strip those walls away. And you're going to be in a much better place, uh, yeah, you know, both on both sides of the table. But is, is it working? Sounds like it is. Yeah, our culture is really great right now. Um, we've got a great group. They seem to we kind of you know leave our doors open very seldomly. Do we close our doors, which we never did in the first place? But like, and we say like, pop in, tell us how you're doing. You know, let us know what you're up to. If you, what do you have? What do you want? What do you need? Like, you know, so we're, I think it's gotten a lot better. It's definitely, honestly, uh, there's a definitely a learning curve because they're like, it's like dipping your toe in the water. You know, a couple of them like responded just right off the bat. No problem. Uh, but some of them were very hesitant. I'm like, come on, like, it's just us. We're not going to, you know, <laughs> this isn't going on your permanent record. And I think also <laughs> some of them are a little less willing to like one of our, our client, our, um, our employees was just always in here. Like she would tell me everything. Like, I mean, more than I wanted to know, um, <laughs> a lot more than I wanted to know. Um, but she felt very comfortable, you know, with us pers on a personal level. So, and you know, it just depends on the personality. Some people are not as willing to divulge what's going on in their lives. Sure. <laughs> but they're here so often that we feel like it's so important for us to know the backstory and like, you know, we, we can't know, we don't want to know it all. And that's really none of our business, but like, we do need to kind of know where you're coming from. Um, so that if you have a bad day, I mean, you're human, we get it. Um, but it, a little bit of a back story and back history is helpful, um, to know kind of what they're going through on a personal level. Yeah. It's, it's really good to hear you say that because if you look on LinkedIn today, there's been one of the reasons why, um, Zengig exists. I, I felt compelled to, 
be a provider of better advice than what most people get from their neighbors and friends and family and their parents. I mean, being in staffing a long time, you know, the the advice that we know people get in their personal life is is often you know awful. It's the polar opposite, and I see a lot of that on LinkedIn lately, which is really encouraging opposition between employees and employers. And I, I think the opposite should should be the case. If you guys have heard of quiet quitting this thing that's being talked about a lot lately. And I just did a, a show on that a couple of days ago. And and the whole point was, if you're in that situation, leave, like don't, right. don't be in a bad situation. And, exactly. and so go into any relationship with, with, with trust and expectation that it's going to go well, because um, the result's going to be much, much better in a help in that healthy environment. Yeah, absolutely. And you're right. There is a lot of that negativity against employers on LinkedIn, um, especially as it relates to, you know, work-life balance and, you know, working from home and, you know, and, you know, obviously I, I have different opinions about that, but like, it's very negative towards like everything's work, work, work. Well, I mean, we pay you and you do need to put in the time that we're paying you for, but we understand you need to have a life. So there is a balance. Um, but yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about as it relates to the negativity and it drives me crazy. Well, and I think there's a lot of bad employers out there that have given the everybody else bad. So it's become like a stigma. If you are an employer, you are inherently bad. And that's a hurdle that employers have to overcome with this trust factor. That's why, you know, we, we try really hard to see things from our employees point of view, which is, you know, it's huge for us because it, it lets us understand, you know, like what we need to do growing wise mm -hmm. as a smaller agency, you know, because we did go, we did face some challenges early. Yeah. It, it, and, and you're dealing with them. You're not running from them. And I think no. that's the, the important thing. And I'm really glad this came up. It's not at all the direction I thought we'd go in today, but it's such an important <laughs> one because it's, I really want, you know, employees listening to know how to achieve success. We, we call it career zen and it's very personal, whatever it is to them what gives them happiness and, and, and satisfaction and the desire to work hard. And you guys know, as well as I do that if it's easy and unrewarding, it's, there's no, there's no satisfaction, you know, like the, to work hard, to achieve something gives a good, a huge sense of accomplishment and it's important and you have to have goals and, 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 and aspirations. And so if someone's in a situation where all they're trying to do is get through the day with as little effort as possible, you're, that's a that speaking of all awful cycle cycles that's one like yeah. get away from that as soon as possible don't stay there trying to um you know get away with something you know on your employer's dime go go find something better right? i mean that's a message i'd want to give yeah absolutely <laughs> that's so true and our you know our team we do a lot of early morning pr where they have to be on site at four o'clock in the morning 4 30 in the morning and and they're wrapped up by call it 10 but they've already put in their eight hour day you know, so we will just be like, go home, take a nap. And if you feel like getting back at it again, great. Otherwise we'll see you tomorrow kind of thing. I mean, we do a lot of that because it is, it's this, this business is very stressful and it can be very, very fast paced. So let, let's, let's, let me ask you about that a little bit, because we, I think we've answered the question of who should consider, you know, going and what are the considerations before starting your own business, right? There's, there's, there, there are many, and they're certainly beyond, just the surface level task. Can I do X, you know, whatever X is, there's a whole lot of things that come behind that. Um, but what about the, the world of PR itself? I mean, it, you know, I was thinking about that prior to getting on with you guys today is in this world of, you know, a nine to five, here's your know, work-life balance. How do you handle that? Um, where you are on call 24 seven. I mean, you, you have to be available when the need arises that, I mean, I, I, from what I understand of PR and maybe that's crisis management. You know, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. But that's part of the deal, right? You can't go. I mean, how do you go into that profession if you want to be, you know, a clock watcher? Can you? Well, I'd, I'd like to tie in the advertising and, and creative and branding portion of our business too, because it's very similar as well. It's just deadline driven constantly. And I mean, with what Kit's side of the business, which is again, the creative branding, copywriting, um, that side of our business is deadline, deadline, deadline. 
And then PR is deadlines as it relates to what media needs and they need it right now, yesterday. And um, otherwise you're not gonna get the exposure that ultimately you're paying our agency to get. So we're both deadline driven and it is, it can be very stressful. Um, I, think, I think the legal term uh, that you're looking for, Pete, is uh, assumption of risk. <laughs> <laughs> like when you're going in, you know, you don't go, you know, live next to the airport and then expect there to be no noise. You know, you don't live on a golf course and not expect golf balls to fly through your living room window. It's just one of those things that it is part of the job. So really, I mean, for the most part, unless you're in a more mundane, the PR portion of a more mundane field, like generally technology, medical, they're a little more sedate. But for the most part, I mean, it is crazy hours, but it comes that that it, it comes with great reward also because when you do get media segments on the air that you pitched on a certain angle, I'll give you an example. Monin Flavoring, they're an international company. They just um they do a lot of work with honeybee conservation, which nobody would know. And it's a big deal to them. So we got we pitched them a segment with this beekeeper who's very famous and it just took off like wildfire. So everybody got to see what, you know, the people that worked on that account got to see what they were doing. You know, when you're an ad creative and you come up with your, your ad cam campaign idea and it gets approved and you see that billboard in Times Square, it is like endorphins pop in. You feel really good about yourself. So there's, there's a, some give and there's some take. I mean, obviously long hours in this business. Yeah. Every now and then, you know, when you're on a deadline for a, you know, big presentation, or if there's a media segment, you know, normally, I don't know why they want to come out at the, the crack of dawn all the time, but um, it happens. Crisis management, like you said, if, you know, something happens at the Florida State Fair on a Saturday night, we've got to be out there because we're, we're there to help their spokesperson. We're, we're there to help them with the strategy of what they should say and what they should do and things like that. So it, it, it's a give and take scenario though, but every there for every negative, there is a, a big, big positive. And a lot of our employees comment that their friends say, man, you've got the best job ever. You know, what a fun job you have. And, and they're like, well, I love my job. You know, I love my job. It's adrenaline. It's exciting. You know? And I said, well, what, you know, what they don't see is that you're there on site at four o'clock in the morning. And I mean, our, you know, we've got it. We've got a person going literally on site tomorrow at six o'clock in the morning for one of our restaurant clients. So that's what they don't see. That's not the fun part. But then when they, like Kit said, when they see the final product, they're like, that's me. That's, I did that. Like, and everybody can see it because it's very forward. I call it forward facing. Nice. How, how do you, how you know, with new people coming in? Cause you're right. Marketing sounds fun. Uh, you know, from the outside looking in, right? Uh, compared to you know sales, for example, where that sounds like a grind and that sounds like a lot of rejection and frustration. Having you know, done my own share of marketing just for the past few years now, I have an entirely different perspective than what I ever you know, would have had previously. Um, how do you screen for that? And then you know, how do you, uh, you know, what do you what do you think is surprises people coming in? I mean, do you, who go to school, get a marketing degree whether it's in the creative space or even you know, in, in PR, do, do you think most go into it uninformed or unaware that that's really what they're signing up for? I don't, I don't think so. As, as you know, generally speaking, no, I don't think they're surprised. I think internships definitely show them, you know, what, what's going on. Of course you get people that have expectations that are out of whack, but um, for the most part, I think people come through in their internships kind of depending on where you intern, um, kind of give them a good picture of what to expect. And I'm sure, you know, uh, their, their professors in school will tell them what agency life is like or what, you know, if you're working for a, a big client, what that's like. Um, so I don't, I don't think that they're uninformed. I think it may be the level of, you know, in some places, like the level of, of uh, time intensive work, but I don't think so. I think for the most part, they, they kind of know. Okay. And we kind of go after employees that we see have had um, some kind of past experience, even if it's just an internship in an agency or in a industry like hospitality's fast paced, hospitality's, you know, 24 seven, that we know that have 
understand the hours that you put in and understand the kind of work and how fast paced it is. Um, so we look for that kind of experience because we know that person's not going to be um, disenchanted. That makes sense. What, what advice would you give to someone on either side, you know, of, 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 of your business who wants to get into the space that you're in? If, you know, someone who's young, who's going to school, um, do they need to go to school? And that, that's a question I, I think of and ask a lot more today than I would have back back when we were in college where it was a given. It's not such a given for me anymore. I'll just say that. But what, what advice do you have? Gosh, uh, that's a pretty broad question. I think mostly I, I would say um, keep an open mind and communicate like we were talking about earlier because uh, I think keeping an open mind like You'll see things and learn things, and you'll you'll figure out if this is a good place for you. Uh, but communicate also in the fact that you can't make it better. If it is a difficult situation, you have to at least do some diligence and communicate, and you know it can get better or it cannot. But I think keeping an open mind and communicating is probably and and be flexible to yeah. a degree. I think to a certain point you have to be flexible and. <laughs> until a certain point and then you will know. Yeah. And I think it, I mean, both you and I throughout our entire college summers, we interned in what we thought we wanted to do. So, you know, after my freshman year in college, I was already interning for a TV station and an agency and an advertising agency, because I that's what I thought I wanted to do. So I came out with already, even though there were internships, a bunch of experience in what I thought I wanted to do, which translated very well into ultimately what we are doing right now. But I think the experience, I mean, we just talked to someone today who is was with, even remotely, was working with a PR agency in New York City where she had some very impressive clients. And on the side, she's helping with an entertainment company that's doing, that does wedding planning and wedding logistics. So she hasn't actually had any full-time job experience, but both of those things ladder up to someone who could be successful at at an agency like ours. Holly, when you were interning, did you all did it also help you realize what you didn't want to do through that experience? Yeah, so I wanted to be a TV reporter, and I went as far as to put a demo reel together and got it out to bunches of small markets throughout the country, and wasn't getting any bites to be honest with you. And at the same time, I was also interning for an advertising agency that offered me a job for eighteen thousand dollars a year. Um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, bird in hand or pie in the sky. I'm going with this advertising agency. Right. So that's how I actually got started in advertising. So I hadn't even done PR until Kit and I moved to Atlanta. I'd never done PR. Interesting. Uh, so, you know, it's always a test, you know, here, here's a real test for me that, you know, given that you have a teenage you know, son who you have to give advice and guidance to in terms of, you know, career pursuit and, and, and education, what, 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 what do you tell him in terms of how to find, you know, the path that he wants to be on and, and ultimately end up? What, what, what do you offer him if he came home, for example, and said, hey, I don't think I need to go to school, right, uh, to go to college. I'm going to go at a different, would you, would you support that if he wanted to, you know, join a band, for example, and, and make that his living? I mean, how, how do you guide, how do you guide your own, you know, your own son in this area? Yeah, you're really good at this. Oh my God, that's such a tough question. <laughs> well, it's a real test, right? Like I tell it people is. all the time, I don't know. If is. Put your money is where your mouth is. Yeah, right. put your money where your right. mouth is. Exactly. Um, I would definitely, I mean, I would definitely support him, I think. I, de I, I say, I think. No, I would definitely support him. I, like you alluded to earlier, Pete, I don't think college is necessarily a mandatory anymore. I mean, I know if if you knew the software... And you you know had some I I can one thousand percent teach you all the creative strategy analysis ideation concepting everything that you'll need to know and can go forward and you can build a portfolio and and go out into the world. I mean, people used to spend you know four years at an undergrad and then two and a half three years at an ad school and be horrendously in debt going into an industry not really known for paying well. You know, and so I think I would be okay with it, depending, you know, as long as they're dedicated, as long as they understand the risks and as long as they are good with 
uh, work ethic, I think I would definitely support it. I think the like one of the things you've always told Tanner is like basically, you know, you can't be good at something without working your butt off at it and like working yeah. at it all the time. And that is he's taken that seriously to heart as it relates to basketball, which is really his passion right now. So you've been you've been the driving train on that. Like it's, the harder yeah, it, you work. It's funny all the axioms that your parents used to just throw out there and you're like, <laughs> oh my God. And you just roll your eyes, you're like, you gotta love the grind or the grind won't love you and all this stuff. And you're like, oh God, please make it stop. <laughs> sure true. enough, here I am like spitting out the same things, you know, and you're like, oh boy, what happened to me? It, yeah, it's incredibly hard, uh, I think, or at least it has been for me it, to impart those things that you know to be so true and, and, and important on you know someone who can't see you know beyond the next five minutes. And that's, uh, you know, I, that's been my challenge as a parent to have, you know, my kids see the, the, the long, you know, farther down the path, right? It's where you want to end up, not, not how you get there. It's as important. And, um, you know, I support trying a lot of different things until you find the one thing that you're willing to put your time and effort into, you know, without any expectation of compensation or reward or notoriety, it's just what you want to do and then go really deep in that area. That's exactly, that's, that's exactly, they don't call it a struggling actor for nothing. I mean, they struggle a long time before they get their breaks. You know, if people see, you know, Hollywood stars and they're like, Oh, I could do that. And it's like, really? I mean, do you understand the level of commitment and, you know, to the craft and things like that? I mean, they love just, like you said, they love doing it. They don't love the accolades. They don't love, you know, things like that. They're in it to, for the process. Mm -hmm. Right. And you guys are, you know, it's the streak is alive. I think this is the 14th of episode of Finding Careers In. And without exception, <laughs> every conversation I've had has in, included um, a, a struggle uh, and, and a commitment to, you know, a realization that sex, success doesn't come easy and it doesn't come fast. And that's as important a message as anything else. I think that young people really need to hear now is, it's, it's, it has to, you have to grind to some yeah. level. You had, you guys have you know, moved multiple times. You switched organizations. You didn't just leave college or leave your parents' house and say, we're now um, starting a business. We're starting a business that will succeed. And the world is our oyster, right? You had to earn it. I mean, you couldn't just do that by showing up. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of, I mean, I hate to say this, a lot of young people have the impression that they're just going to start something that's just going to immediately be successful and they're going to make a bunch of money. And, it is not a quick fix. It is not a quick fix. So what are the traits that, you know, or values or, or both that you guys have, have uh, you know, have that have allowed, you know, press to succeed? Because objectively you're part of it. You, you've built a successful organization. You have an amazing client list. Um, you've mentioned a couple, you, you know, you, you, you do business with Outback, um, you know, who's a, who's just a, you know, a, a top brand. I mean, you've, you've had to earn that and it's not coincidence. So what are those things that in, in, in the way you work, the way you've, um, you know, the way you go about conducting business that has allowed you to succeed where, where others you know, have it? Um, I, I have, there's several different things I can, I'll just start. Um, one of the things is there's nothing we won't do that we've asked our employees to do. Um, I, I, you know, I'm out, you know, same way we're out, we're out at the fair, we're out at events, we're lifting boxes, we're you know, there's nothing we're asking them to do that we won't do ourselves. And they see that. And I think they are, they respect us for that. Um, that's one thing. And that's, that, that remains true right now. I know for me, I, <clears throat> I learned so much from my creative directors early in my career. And it, it was a big, you know, they helped me a, a lot. And I think back to those experiences and I look at our team now and I think of them looking at me in that same way. So I really try and help steer them in certain ways and like, hey, this is a best practice. Hey, try this. And, and it's just working with them and thinking of it, like I've always said, from their perspective and trying to impart that wisdom. Not that I'm like, you know, Nostradamus or anything like that. I'm not Gandhi. I'm not, you know, I don't have Confucius. I don't have all this wisdom, but I do have experience. And it's really like, that's kind of what I'm trying to help them with. It's like, I'm already ahead of you on your path. So let me help you and show you the pitfalls. 
That's a great way to phrase it. Um, what about on the client side? You know, why why does Crunch Fitness you know, do business with with press instead of someone else? Why does Fit Life work with you instead of someone else? What what do you think those those traits are? The way you've operated the organization. Uh, I think also we, like I said, we we've, we've been very fortunate to stand on the shoulders of giants of the people we've worked with before, for and with before, and we can bring that experience and knock it out of the park every time. All we need is the opportunity. And so I think once, you know, we're very easy going, we, you know, always try our best um, and do great work. And I think the combination of that clients respond to really well. We're very responsive. We're very nimble and quick to, re to return on like work, like ad campaigns, things like that. We can turn it around real quick. You know, we're, We've got great connections as it pertains to media. So if something happens, we can just hit somebody up on the horn and say, hey, you know, uh, what do you think about this? We're, we've are we got this going on or X, Y, Z. And they're quick to jump at it because they know us. They like us, you know. We, um, we just have great relationships and a great work ethic. And like I said, strategically, creatively, and everything else, we we've been helped in the past by people that were really great and showed us the way. I think it's also a, let's start to the likability. Um, there's a, there's a definite rapport almost immediately with our clients when we, when they come on board that they just like us as people and they enjoy working, collaborating with us. And then we also do what we say we're going to do. And we find a lot, a lot of agencies get they get burned by a lot of agencies because they promise the world and don't deliver on it and they come to us and when they were after working with us they're like you actually like produce results like you actually did what you said you were going to do and you followed through and you you know didn't ghost me and you did i mean like the most basic things but the most basic things aren't basic <laughs> um so that's that's we hear that a lot um, uh, that's a that's i'm going to quote you on that specifically because it's so it's such a great and simple but profound statement. The the most basic things, you know, they're not basic. They should be. <laughs> I mean, they but should. they're absolutely not. And I see it and and I um that's just that's really meaningful <laughs> what what you guys just said is, is that we're going to do what we say we do, right? I mean, what more can you ask for? Um I think that sounds simple and we hear it so many times and so many times they come to us after going with two and three other agencies and they're burned. I mean, they're so burned and we're trying to talk them into like, it's okay. Like we're going to, we promise that if we tell you we're going to do something, we will do it. And, and it takes a long time when you, I mean, there's been clients we've been courting for six and seven years that finally come on board and then haven't left us for another six or seven years. I mean, they've been our clients for we have numerous clients that have been with us for in excess of five, six, seven, eight years um, because of that, because we actually do what we say we're going to do. So you you guys probably don't talk about these things very often. You just, and you probably take these things for granted, right? That you're, you know, because yeah. that's who you are and how you operate. Um, but, but it's so rare. Uh, it be, and I suspect a lot of the clients, you know, are enamored on the surface of working for a big age with a big agency, you know, with, with, you know, in New York or with lots of resources, I, I suspect they don't probably get the same level of service and commitment and dedication. hundred percent. They come back, like Holly said, they, it, it's like one of those flirtations. They go off and cause they want to, you know, Oh, we're, you know, we've got a New York agency or we've got an LA agency and, you know, it's I, we've had it happen with a couple of our own clients that have decided they wanted to spread their wings and kind of like see what, you know, else, you know, the world has to offer and they come right back and they're like, man, we got better service, better results, better relationships for a third of the price, you know, and it's, it's, it just says a lot about what we do and how we do it. And they're also getting access to us. Yeah. Whereas at a large agency, more than likely they're working with either an intern in some cases we've heard, plenty of that, or an entry level, you know, but they're getting they're getting us. Like yeah. We're involved in every single one of our clients in one shape, way, shape, or form or another. I, I was listening to uh, um, an audio book uh, over the weekend by the guys who um, 
created Basecamp. If you're familiar with with that you know, project management software, 37 yep. Signals is the name of the, their company. And they were talking about how one of their beliefs and things they've come to learn is bigger isn't necessarily better. They, and the, the, the desire to scale and grow as an organization it shouldn't be a universal thing. Like it, it may not be right for you. And what you guys are describing really resonates and, and is consistent with um, so much. If you guys haven't listened to the book yet, I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head, but it, um, I think it's called Rebuild. Uh, but it just was really resonated with me is that I feel like I'm supposed to grow. I feel like I'm supposed to add, but with that comes the complexities that we talked about you know, yeah. a little bit ago. And the inability at per, potentially to 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 do business in the way that um, had you successful in the first place, right? Where it, it starts to you know almost um, you know be you know too far of an arm's length sort of thing, and um, and and so what you're saying really makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, really resonates. If you could do anything differently, you could go back, right? What what would you have done? Um, if you could go back and change any one thing. Oh man, I don't even, I try not to live like that because it'll make you crazy. Um, <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's healthy, kid. I have like yeah. healthy things I could name off the top of my head. I know. Time. Well, I think, that's you know, good. at least speaking from an ad perspective, I was sort of like Tampa growing up was, as you probably know, is, is a bit of a bubble. You know, my whole family was here. My whole friend, all my support system was here. All my friends were here. So it was very comfortable. I think the only thing I would have done was push myself at that age to be more daring and sort of like maybe, you know, go work in New York for three years and don't be scared. You know, uh, I think that's the only real regret. I mean, my my career path was amazing um, and I'm super fortunate, but I think I definitely would have kicked myself in the ass and, and made myself go try something, you know, in a big, big market back then. Holly, anything? Not marry me. I'm going to ask about that in a second. And before I let you go, I can't, I can't not, I can't not ask about that. I thought about this a several times, so it must be a thing. I, I kind of wish I'd started sooner. Mm. Kind of wish that we had gotten our own thing going sooner than we did. I know that sounds crazy because it's like we were in our mid thirties, but like, what did what were we waiting on? I don't know. Like I could have done without that last gig <laughs> right? and, and just started sooner than we did. I don't think the world, at least from my, in my experience encourages that. Right. I mean, the message, you know, and this is, as we've already talked about a little bit in the concept of going to college or not, or, or pursuing an alternate career path, you know, the, the message historically has been go get a job, work for someone else, have security, it comes with that, but but reality is that's not security. <laughs> we, we know that. But I also, I mean, don't you think to some degree you needed that time and experience? Um, because I, I considered starting a staffing company after I left my first job in staffing, which was only a year out of school. I would have failed miserably. I did not have enough what I think of as reps to use a sports analogy. I didn't have yep. enough you know, trials and tribulations and experiences and all the things that I needed in order to feel confident or, or to, to, to be effective when I did start my business in my mid thirties, similar to you guys, I mean, cause our timeframes are pretty similar there. Um, do you, you, do you look back and think, gosh, maybe you wouldn't have been ready? I, you know, after our Atlanta get like stint, I was, I was, I was already putting the wheels in motion to get this thing going. And we took a job the, the next the next job that's probably when i i personally i can't speak for kit i would have probably started right then and there and that would have been you know not too much sooner but sooner than than we did so and that i makes sense. Yeah, but so anyway. kit so other than not marrying kit um <laughs> that that's why i never said that i never said that but but i do want to ask you know and it, before we go that that's unique. And one of the reasons I was excited to have you guys on because you've, you've, um, you've been successful in, in life and, and, and professionally and, and in your relationship and 
none of those things individually are easy um, for sure. And, and what, what do you think has, if, if you even know, maybe you don't, cause you don't know anything differently at this point, but um, that has allowed you guys to beat the odds of that, where you, you still like each other, even though you work together and live together. I mean, that's a big deal. And I think, you know, that, but it's worth saying. Yeah. It's a lot of quality time. And that's a good way of putting it. Uh, and honestly, we stay in our own lanes, but we also respect the fact that I respect the fact that I don't know as much about branding and building a brand or rebranding or copywriting. I don't know. I don't know much about that. I don't know about much about like the advertising and creative and branding side of the business. So we kind of stay in our own lanes and we respect the fact that you're an expert at that, but by the way, I'm an expert in the traditional PR and the, that kind of thing. And then we meet in the middle somewhere too. Um, we have our moments, not, not to say we don't have our moments, but um, it's kind of a walk away type situation. It's like, okay, if we're not, and we, no one's ever seen us argue in the office. We don't argue here. Like we just kind of, we'll just separate basically. I mean, I hate to say this, but we'll just walk away. Just walk away. Yeah, do, do you have a code? Is there a word that you have? No, where you just, just generally talk? Holly side eye. Okay. I'm like, all right. <laughs> okay. Time for me. I'm going to yeah. go get lunch. Bye. Um, yeah. So, we, the, you know, yeah. We but I, I think I the know. other thing is open-mindedness. Like there's no pretense to us, uh, you know, with social media being such a big thing, we have people here. I'm like, can you show me how to do this on Instagram? <laughs> I'm like such a, a, a social, like just dummy. So I, I don't pretend to know that stuff. So I, like Holly said, I stay in my lane and I can help them with, you know, the creative, with the concepting, with advertising, anything like that. But there's a lot that I don't know that they do. Holly knows everything about PR pitching and the mechanics of that. Like I said, her network is amazing and her network ability is amazing. So I just kind of lean on that. Yeah. And I think, you know, and we go home, I will say, I mean, unlike you, we only have one child. I think if we had more than one child, the dynamics could even be more complicated, but we have one child that we focus our personal time on basically. Um, and I think that makes it a lot easier too, because we don't have the job, you know, what we're trying to get done for the, for the job, our home, you know, three or four children. And we have one child and we just basically divide and conquer. Yeah. All we get to play zone. We don't have to play man. To use yeah. a sports analogy. Yeah, there, there's there's certainly pros and cons, but really, I mean, you you guys are um, what you're accomplishing is is just it, it's it's really impressive. It's really neat to watch from afar because um, what you're doing is is what so many people aspire to, um, and and you're like I said earlier, you're beating the odds. So um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy for 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 your success, and um, you know, if there's any, is it safe to say? And maybe, maybe not I ask everyone this, but have you found your career Zen? I love mm. what I do. I absolutely love what I do. I look forward to coming here every day. Now it also depends. It also is based on our culture. We have a really great culture right now. Our people make it is every, are everything, are everything. They're just fun. They get along. They're fun to collaborate with. They're fun to chat with. They make it a very pleasant place to come every day. So when I talk to people, I have people, they're people like, you're so passionate about what you do. And I'm like, I love what I do, but I like the challenge. I like the new business side of things. Like I like going and hunting something down and, and like being like, we, you know, we want this piece of business. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, I just, I like the, the new business hunt, but I really, I love what we do. And I also like, you know, I, I, this is three going 360 here, but I do like the flexibility. I, we can go pick up Tanner at 4.15 and, and call it a day. And we can go to a basketball game, away basketball game, and not think twice. And they under, you know, our people understand that. So I feel like it's kind of the best of both worlds, at least in my opinion. I, I love what I do. That, that's a great, I, I can't think of a better answer than that. Kit, any, anything? Yeah, like Holly said, I think the juice for me is um, getting our creative product out there and seeing it. And it used to be about me seeing my work, but now it's more about moving the needle for our clients. And I know that sounds corny, but I'm competitive like Holly and I want our clients to beat their client, their competitors out. And when you see them come back and say, holy cow, like this stuff is amazing. You know, we, we Outback's been 
had a request for ideas from all their agencies, they had an all agency. Um, and so we submitted our deck of ideas and they came back and said, these were by far the most like off, like out of the park creative. And that meant a lot to us. We're like a small agency. They use a much bigger agency like sports marketing arm. They have a digital arm. They have, you know, a huge ad agency. And it meant a lot for us, to us, that they wouldn't even say that. That's awesome. Um, you've earned it. And you, 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 you're you succeeding the right way. You've done it for a long time. And it sounds like you've got a lot of work ahead still to do and not going to slow down anytime soon. So um, I think that's a, that's a perfect way to wrap up you guys. Thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I really yeah, appreciate sure. it. And it's, it's been great to learn more about your business. Thank so congrats, you. congrats on all your success. Thanks for having us, Pete. And everyone who's been listening, thanks so much for making it this far drive safe and look forward to speaking again soon.